Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome to another edition of What's for Dinner. It's about 3.45 on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. It's early. It is early. That's the way we like it, right? Well, yeah. our schedule and work schedule permits this. It does. In our earlier life, this would have been yeah. unachievable. Yeah, we're kind of in that phase where we're, get, we're getting out of the rat race phase. Yeah. Do you feel like that? Yeah. Good. So what's going on tonight? So tonight we were gonna have steak and other things and Mark said there's a ton of leftovers in here so I said maybe we should have that so we have two sirloin burgers last from last night wrapping bacon wrapped sirloin burgers okay and then we had a whole I did all those chicken wings you know sometimes there's kids here and then there's not and then last night we went to bed and there's six kids here so like it's hard to figure out how much to cook and what to cook, you know, because sometimes they come in and they'll devour everything in the fridge. Totally. Other times we'll make all this yummy stuff for them and then they don't even touch it. So right. anyway, we're going to finish it off tonight. Yeah. So I warmed you up chicken wings and the sirloin burgers and yeah. then I made omelets. So this is oh, mine okay. with just American cheese and ham. Okay. And this is yours with Swiss cheese and ham Yum. and then loads of butter. Yeah. Looking forward to it. And, um, you know, you guys have, oh, do you want to ask me a question first? <laughs> You're getting ahead of yourself. Yeah, because you got me all riled up today. I did get you riled up. I brought some really cool stuff on, um, that I heard on a podcast up to Teresa, and we're gonna we're gonna be talking about it. Don't we got? It's good stuff. Um, so, will anything that we made tonight cause our blood sugar or insulin to spike? And no. why is that okay? And no, and why is that important? Because if you want to reverse disease, prevent disease, then you do not want your insulin up. Okay. You want your sugar nice and low, so your insulin is nice and low, so then you can get all the little body fat and fuel from your fat instead of here. But if I added oh, pancakes, mm. I I am in a little weak mode right now, so um, I am craving things. But if we had pancakes, French toast, grits, what else do people eat for breakfast? Oatmeal. Mm -hmm. um, that's all going to spike your sugar, and Coffee then all this, products. yeah, and all this butter and everything will go to your booty. Yeah. Okay. So with insulin on board, we can't really tap into our fat stores. Right. So we got to clear the insulin. That means we can't have carbs, which, you know, also means sugar, sugar carbs. Um, and then what about the, we were talking about this and what about the clotting cascade thing? Right. So diabetics who have their blood sugar always up here and their insulin are at double and triple the risk for heart attack and stroke. Why? Because having insulin activated activates the clotting cascade for heart attack and stroke. When they have dissected plaque from people's arteries, there's never cholesterol in there. It's a whole bunch of clotting um, materials. So your body's just doing what it was divinely designed to do. But, you know, unfortunately, if your A1C is like, you know, 6, 15, I mean, I've seen 18 and 20, and then you tell me six months later you had a stroke, I would not be surprised. And he will go with A1C for oh, everybody yeah, um, okay. that's, that's watching here is just a 90 day average of your blood sugar. Right. So that what Teresa was talking was those numbers were indicative of high blood sugar. Yeah. And, and this is a persistent thing too. Like what's the, what's the metric with regards to uh, the diabetes? You know, like you've been sick for a really long time. Yeah, by the time your corporate medicine provider diagnoses you with an A1C, that's their standard of care to say you have diabetes, you've had it for 15 years because your insulin is like a marathon one runner. He is just smashing down and damping, clamping down sugar for years so when until you're your doctor can figure it out. Once he gives way, sugar goes up because he's not there pushing it down as much anymore. Your insulin resistance, once he gives way, your provider can see that you're diabetic by the A1C. A normal A1C for me is five and below. For corporate medicine, <clears throat> 5.7 and below. 5.7, your pre-diabetes, above 6.4, you're full-blown. So, you know, one of my patients has a, a 15 A1C. One of my patients has an 18 A1C. When they tell me, if they were to tell me they had a stroke, I would not be surprised. Or a heart attack. Yeah, yeah. So I would be sad, but I would not be surprised. So when you're eating this sugar or carbohydrates that are converting to sugars, and you have this persistent in, uh, intake of carbohydrates, then your pancreas is cranking out insulin. Mm -hmm. The insulin's moving around your, blood, your bloodstream and it's picking up that sugar and shuttling it to the different parts of your body you need. So if you're not an active person, like a lot of people aren't yes. nowadays, then your body, if your body can't utilize it, it just sends it straight to fat storage. Um, and if you do utilize it, then it will go to the appropriate muscles, the brain, whatever's using the, the, the glucose. So right. what you're talking about is a constant elevated blood sugar, which means constant elevated 
insulin yes. and the insulin has to come in your so your pancreas is working overtime constantly picking up the sugar and right and around. you're getting more insulin resistant it's like a drug addict and you need a bigger hit and a bigger hit so your body stops responding so you got to send out more insulin and more insulin and more insulin and eventually your pancreas peters out the problem with aging is we become insulin resistant. That insulin resistant, that's a part of aging. And then aging also causes insulin resistant. I think it's interesting. I've been, I went to nursing school in 1998. So back then we called type two diabetes, we called it NIDDM or non-insulin dependent diabetes and adult onset because nobody got diabetes as a youth unless you had type one because we knew that aging brings about insulin resistance and you know you start to lose muscle mass at age 30 to 40 so that makes you more insulin resistant so anyway all that to say this is the crux of health i think this is so important it's your food your sleep and then too many people are drinking too much alcohol mm -hmm. shrinking your brain set you up for seven different cancers what are we doing to ourselves and what is socially and legally acceptable food, alcohol, and we equate our society with busyness being of worth so you don't get good sleep because you're always doing stuff. Yeah, yeah, so many people hang their hat on, oh, I only get a few hours sleep and I'm good with that because I have to get up so early and work and everything. Yeah. I, I'm not bashing that. I mean, no. that's like, I can respect people who have a strong work ethic, but you know, um, it's not good for you. I mean, and eventually it will catch up with you. The other issue too is people with shift work. Yeah. Um, they don't realize how, how detrimental shift work is. Our bodies are not wired to sleep during the day and work at night they and you know, be up. And, but we um, are thankful for shift, the shift. Absolutely, workers, I mean. yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, um, oh gosh, I lost my train. I thought I was gonna hit you with a question on something. Well, but... and then also you came in the office today. So you stopped in and you started telling me about a podcast, things we already know about, but I was like, yeah. why do you have to get me riled up? on top of the stories, I already hear people bringing in. Yeah. You know, but um, eggs are not bad. You can eat a dozen eggs a day and that's not bad. But when you eat eggs with pancakes, that makes it bad. Yeah. Eggs have been villainized. Meat has been villainized. This and there is a huge anti-meat agenda being pushed right now. Yeah. And you are being bamboozled with that propaganda. Yeah, gaslighted. There totally. is nothing wrong with eating this way. Nothing. So just so you know, most of the information that you see or you hear on TV and the news and whatnot, when they're talking about like, you know, meat being bad for you, it's the ultimate, what you're listening to, they'll tell you, hey, a study came out and a study said this or that. Okay. So they're talking about observational studies. Yeah. They're not in medicine, you know, peer reviewed, um, randomized you know, randomized controlled control. trials are double the blinded. double blinded true. Yeah. Those are the, the, the gold standard for studies. Well, when you hear about them on um, on the TV or on the radio or whatever your choice is, uh, social media, most of the time they're talking about observational studies. So all that is, is basically like, it, it's a, it's a question like, Hey, you know, you're, you have diabetes, you know, did you eat steak during the last 20 years at any one point or how many times? <laughs> right. It, right. And, and no, it's, it's true. Like 12 months, like right. how many times did you eat steak in 12 months? And you're like, I don't know. And you give them a best guess. Yeah. And so, you're like zero to two, three to five, you know, like, and you're like, I don't know. So, but that literally is an observational study and they'll connect the two. They'll say, okay, well, do a state cause I'm not, I'm making this up guys, right. but state causes diabetes. I'm just trying to, you know, make the point really oh. these observational studies are nothing but marketing gimmicks. They put them on and they make them sound scientific and, 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 and legit when they're not. And they're just trying to change your behavior. Yeah, That's what this is. All you have to do is put before it a study show. Yeah, it doesn't a study matter showed. what it doesn't say what kind of study right. or that there was three participants. It's just a study showed. Yeah, yeah. And you guys not... are gonna have to go ahead. Yeah, like you just have to wake up yeah. and you have to change what is holding you back. I'm gonna tell you number one is support, spousal support. Yeah, because I hear it all day long. That is the a big obstacle, and yeah. I am so sorry about that. But yeah. you know, there's no halves and halves. It's just 100 percent. You don't like that person that day. You don't say it. You just keep going. I mean, I just, I know that's a big hangup for you guys, but at what point are you going to take the initiative to, for your health? Yeah. No one else. You know more than your providers do about nutrition following us on what's for dinner. Yeah. And you, you need a partner in this too. I mean, it's also, you know, it's kind of that whole idea of, you know, going to the gym with somebody who's, you know, going to lift you up and is going to try and yeah. motivate you. And then the days that they're down, you're going to motivate them. So, I mean, whether it's a friend, it's a family member, it's, you know, um, you know, it's one of your kids, if your spouse doesn't support you, uh, I mean, it's, it's tough. Like you and I would not have been 
as far along as we are in this journey if we didn't have each other for support. So yeah. could you imagine every time someone made this meal, your spouse was like, this is dumb. I'm not eating this. You're going to die. I asked my friend at the bar if this was fine. And he said, no, you know, like, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. I really pray for each one of you that you are around people that lift you up, encourage you and help you be better. Um, I know a lot of people don't have that opportunity, but yeah. that's the friends that I pray that all of you guys have. And that's not just around eating. No, that's around your life, life in general. It's life. Like <laughs> so. that's what I tell the kids. I mean, Proverbs says it, you know, hang out with wise people, be wise, hang out with fools, be fools. But like it matters. And I hope that you guys have encouraging, supportive people around yep. you. Yep. And you guys matter too. So um, we love you guys. Tell us what you're having for dinner. Yes. And if you have any questions, share them with us, ask us, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Love you all. Bye. Bye.